This is the Kybalion and Physics Part 6, The Death of Quantum Physics. Just kidding, it's the Kybalion versus Quantum Physics. So far, I've spent the last five videos explaining an atomic model based on the seven laws of nature found on the mysterious Kybalion. And now in this video, I'm going to be discussing the problems with quantum physics. So if you're a scientist or a free thinker and ignore these problems, maybe you aren't. I'm going to start with a double slit experiment. Now, I've already made a video about this, elaborating on it, so I'll just keep it short exactly how it says in the book and in the website. The double slit experiment. The double slit experiment has confounded quantum physics because the result of the experiment is not explained by the current atomic model. A beam of light was shot towards a wall with two slits running vertically. Behind that was another wall, which produced this image. It confused quantum physicists because they were sure that energy was made out of particles moving in straight lines, which would not be able to produce the interference pattern that emerged from this experiment. The interference pattern can only be caused by energy moving in waves, as shown in this image. Balancing energy moves in waves. The beam of light shot out towards the double slit wall was outward balancing energy. Although outward balancing energy can be regulated to move in one direction, the particles carried in the waves still emit light outwardly in all directions. The waves carry the particles, as related throughout this entire project. It's easier to detect the particles since they carry some type of charge, but it is currently nearly impossible to detect the waves that carry the particles since they do not produce heat nor light. Even neutrinos, one of the smallest particles detected, is carried by balancing energy. Electrons, photons, positrons, ions, muons, neutrinos are all the same things with differences in sizes. They are all tiny particles of heat and light carried in the waves of balancing energy. Particles do not have different properties. They react differently depending on the size and the frequency of the waves. A particle will emit heat and light getting smaller unless the balancing energy holding it is inward enough to hold the entirety of it, the way that information is stored in computers. CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, translated from the French acronym, has successfully smashed atoms together in an attempt to discover what the nucleus of an atom is made out of. As smashing two things usually does, their nuclei exploded and particles scattered. When outward balancing energy is smashed together, it will scatter into smaller pieces because masculine energy repels itself. Of course, quantum physics has yet to understand that dark energy surrounding the nucleus of an atom is light's opposite. So where does the dark energy move to after the atoms get smashed together? Perhaps if they looked at the black scorch marks left behind. CERN's atom smashing experiment can easily be reproduced and observed by running two hoses of water against each other. The two opposing streams of water will cause the water to form into smaller droplets and scatter. But the droplets are still water. The properties of water did not change. There is an attempt to name individual droplets of the same thing as different types of energy. The boson Higgs, the quarks, ups, and downs are just a few of these that fall into this category. There is an assumption that different particles carry different properties, based on abstract math and complicated equations. Imagine naming individual droplets of water while assuming that each one does different things. Mm -hmm. Water, whether it be part of a stream or a lake, is just droplets. It's still simply water. It can be used in different ways depending on how it's made to come out. For example, running water at high speeds under intense pressure can be made to cut metal. Particles are the same way. Let's talk about dark matter. Dark matter is not matter. It is balancing energy that has lost its charge of heat and light, which I've explained in part four. If balancing energy does not recycle, it will simply go in on itself in a spiral pattern. This type of balancing energy would be nearly impossible to find since it keeps going inward on itself, nor does it produce heat or light, yet could be everywhere since not all balancing energy gets recycled. Imagine infinitely small black dots everywhere in space. The darkness of a space should not be confused with dark energy or inward parts, which help create all life and matter. Antimatter. Antimatter is another name for unrecycled balancing energy that has lost its charge of heat and light, so it goes inward on itself. The term antimatter is deceiving since the opposite of something is nothing. It is obviously something too. An experiment done by CERN involved shooting a positron beam into antimatter, which caused an explosion. It would seem that inward balancing energy is not as strong as direct inward energy. Although it attempted to surround the particles, it was not able to withstand a stream of them, causing a microscopic explosion. Like an overinflated balloon, it popped. The idea behind antimatter is that it is the opposite of matter, and somehow they come together to cancel each other out. According to the laws of nature, opposites come together because they are attracted to each other. The pictures of antimatter from CERN show the movement of a particle in balancing energy as it loses its heat, 
Some of the balancing energy seems to have branched off as it starts circling in on itself as the tiny particles of light dissipated. The fact that it has moved in an inward spiral is indicative that inward energy exists. Gravitons. Quantum physics has yet to explain gravity in a simple, natural way, as is the purpose of science, but there are a few theories based on abstract math. One such theory assumes that gravity is caused by a particle that has yet to be discovered. It has been named the graviton. This pattern of movement is not found anywhere in nature. Along with this strange theorized particle, the idea of anti-gravity emerged, which is considered to be the opposite of gravity. Unfortunately, quantum physics has yet to understand that everything works through opposites, as explained by the laws of nature. Gravity is already attraction and repel, so the term anti-gravity is mislabeled due to misunderstanding. The explanation for the atom based on the laws of nature starts with the explanation for gravity, how light and dark interact with each other based on simple attraction between male and female. Masculine and feminine are found everywhere in nature. Recently, physicists have announced that they have detected gravity waves from space, although they have yet to understand the cause of gravity and why it would seem to move in waves. Gravity is caused by the attraction of inward parts and atoms to a larger singularity. As the singularity of a celestial body keeps pushing out in a rhythm, it causes a vibration. This action is incredibly fast. In those tiny moments where the nucleus is bigger from pushing outward, the inward parts of atoms get more attracted to it but it happens so fast that we would not be able to feel it. We can, however, observe its opposite by observing a flame. At first glance, a flame without interference seems calm and smooth, but a closer look shows us that it is really blurry, which means it's vibrating really fast. In those moments that the Earth's singularity is bigger, the repelling force is also stronger, causing the microscopic waves. Space-time. Another popular theory as to the explanation of gravity involves using the space-time model. It shows the Earth sitting on a grid in a depression. Unfortunately, that model looks very similar to having a bowling ball on top of a soft bed. The weight of the ball causes the depression in the mattress. But if the mattress were truly to represent space, then the ball would have to be inside the mattress, not on top. This model does not address the cause of gravity. The atomic clock experiment. The only experiment that tried to prove that space was space-time involved sending an atomic clock into orbit. When it returned, it was compared to an atomic clock here on Earth, and there was a difference in milliseconds. But if energy acts differently in space, flames are around in space, then so would an atom. Hence, the difference in time of an atomic clock in space versus the Earth's gravity. It's just space. Things move through it. Folding space-time is a popular idea that manifested in science fiction, but has been taken seriously over time. Regardless, the idea of taking a piece of paper to demonstrate folding space-time is not logical. The piece of paper would have to be infinitely long and wide in all three dimensions. How can that be bent? Space is empty. There is nothing to bend. Space is measured by plotting points on a grid that has three dimensions, length, width, and height, or x, y, and z. The space between atoms and celestial bodies is caused by push and pull, repel and attraction. Energy does not travel through alternate dimensions because there are none. Everything can be explained as part of this reality, the only one. Let's talk about time. The understanding of time for humans is based on the rotation and spin of the Earth around the Sun. Time is a tool, like math and geometry, to help intelligent minds understand how things work, but nothing more. Time is not a force, nor a dimension. There is only the moment one thing leads to another. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Space-time is an irrational concept. There is only space, but we can measure how much time it takes to get from one point to another. Finally, let's talk about the atomic model itself. The current atomic model that has dominated science since 1932, credited to the physicist James Chadwick, is a strange model that does not relate to nature in any way. It does not provide functionality nor purpose, and it raises more questions than answers. According to quantum physics, an atom is made up of a nucleus of positive protons and neutral neutrons held together by weak force and strong force surrounded by negative electrons. We've all heard this so much that it simply gets accepted, like so many other things. This model assumes that energy has nothing to do with nature, while being the basis for it, which is illogical. What in nature is negative? Nothing. What in nature is neutral? Nothing. Where do weak force and strong force manifest themselves? Nowhere. Well, maybe the gym. What attracts positive to negative? Nothing. Why would an atom, the building block for life and matter, have nothing to do with nature? There is a huge labeling problem for quantum physics, which has caused an even bigger misunderstanding. 
For example, there is nothing neutral in nature, so a neutron is, mis is mislabeled. Nor is the nucleus of light made up of tiny spheres. It's all one tiny singularity of outward moving heat and light. Neutrons do not exist. When we learn about negative numbers as youngsters, we are taught that negative numbers are irrational. Negative is the absence of something. How can nothing be measured? Electrons are not negative. They are something. They are part of outward balancing energy. Besides, how would negative energy give off positive charges? Hmm? There is nothing negative in nature. We were wrong. We have to move on from it. Things got worse when physicists decided to take the irrational concept of negative numbers and apply them to understanding nature, especially when Chad Chadwick's model was so confusing, lacking any real answers. For example, the square root of negative 1 was taken into consideration, yet the simplicity of math shows us that this is impossible. Some have called this fashionable nonsense. It is. Ooh, let's talk about M-string. So quantum physics has lost its way by accepting an irrational concept to understand nature. The most modern theory based on abstract math is now called M-string. There are a few competing string theories, but they seem to have merged into one, M-string, in hopes of discovering a theory of everything, which I've already given you. This theory states that energy moves through alternate dimensions, sometimes five, sometimes eleven, that it moves through other dimensional membranes connected by strings, and that it can even time travel. Even among the theorists, it's not exactly known if the M and M string means magic, mystery, or membrane. This theory makes a claim that gravity and atomic vibration are caused in alternate realities, which is interesting since Chadwick's model never explained gravity nor atomic vibration. It most certainly is a very outlandish theory, and, and yet some think that because it's based on theoretical abstract math, it is quantum theory's greatest achievement, or it's the downfall of quantum physics and theoretical abstract math, as anything can be said about something that is not there. According to the laws of nature, gravity and atomic vibration are caused by the attraction between male and female as expressed throughout this entire project. There is no equation to explain the attraction between males and females, and yet it exists. The mystery of energy was never a math problem. It's a logic problem. Don't confuse the two. Occam's razor states that the simplest explanation is probably true. Occam's razor is like the Me Too movement. If you ignore it or change the rules, you lose. So, what number defines females? If 1 plus 1 equals 2, but man and woman can equal 3 or 7 or something else based on reproduction, what number differentiates between masculine and feminine? If females were considered as negative, then male and female would be 1 plus negative 1, which equals 0. Even if negative numbers get attached to inward energy, it can only be done so in comparison to the size of the outward nucleus. Otherwise, the measurement of inward energy must be measured in rational numbers because it is something. You see, not all logic problems are math problems. If you still think females are the same as negative, then go ask one and see what happens. Good luck! Math it is said that math is the key to understanding the universe. There has been over a century of doing calculations in hopes of understanding energy. One could even argue that not all the calculations have been done yet, even with modern technology doing it for us. Or, maybe math is not the key to understanding. After all, math was not used to understand biology, anatomy, or any of the environmental sciences except for measuring. As shown by quantum physics, using math incorrectly would lead to confusion and outlandish answers like M-string. Math is a tool like geometry and keeping time. It can be used to measure something or even to reveal patterns in nature, but numbers do not provide explanations in regards to nature. True. Let's talk about my hero in the physics world. When the physicist Max Planck's decades-long work on atoms was ignored for Chadwick's model, he left us this riddle which is now called Planck's constant. Quote, according to classical physics, an electron in orbit around an atomic nucleus should emit electromagnetic radiation, or photons, continuously, because it is continuously accelerating in a curved path. The resulting loss of energy implies that the electron should spiral into the nucleus in a very short time. In example, atoms cannot exist. End quote. It means that if electrons cause electricity and mass, by the time they cause electricity, they would not be able to cause mass. Thus, the current atomic model is impossible. The answer to Planck's riddle is that photons, or electrons, come from the nucleus, not the surrounding field. If he had drawn his illustration in three dimensions, we would have realized long ago that particles come from the nucleus, carried in the waves of balancing energy. 
The genius Max Planck also called atoms black bodies, and the electromagnetic field, which is balancing energy, was called black body radiation. It's almost as if he knew. Perhaps his only mistake was that he believed that energy was positive and negative, not masculine and feminine. Since he coined the phrase black body, it has been kept in this project as a more appropriate name for a black hole, which is an enormous atom. Finally, the problem with quantum physics. Quantum physics is the study of particles in its smallest scales, assuming everything about energy is made up of particles, with the assumption that everything is made out of light. Unfortunately, not everything is made up of particles. Only balancing energy carries particles. Two particles of light will never create matter the way that two males will never be able to procreate. Quantum physics does not take natural opposites into consideration, while holding on to the irrational assumption that energy could be negative. The physicist Werner Heisenberg stated a more specific problem in his quote. Quote, The basic idea is to shove all fundamental difficulties onto the neutron and do quantum physics in the nucleus. End quote. But now we know that neutrons do not exist. So the problem is confounded, and there is more to an atom than just the nucleus. A step backwards is needed to see a clearer picture. Energy turns out to have gender, which manifests throughout nature. Bye-bye, quantum physics. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for your time. All this is for sale in a book, if you're interested in buying it. Or you can go to the website and read all the information for free, which I pay for myself. Kaibalian and physics.com. Stick around for part seven. We're going to be talking about creation. All the big questions, like the Big Bang, the birth of stars. And we're even going to talk about the big mysteries. Hope you stick around.